Now, let's start. Joshua chapter number 1, verse 8. Joshua 1, verse 8. We're going to read together as a family. Everybody, let's go. One, two, go louder. Now, before you sit down, I want you to pick up something God says here. There are two things standing out in this place. It will make thy way prosperous. And then you shall have what? Good success. Could that distinguish prosperity from success? Talk to me here. Are you not ready to go to class? That it will make your way prosperous, then you shall have good success. Now sit down. Let me start from somewhere tonight. Are we ready? Please lessen movement. Teaching on what I captioned, goal setting and kingdom success. Goal setting and kingdom success. This week we converge here to understand the principles. The keys for kingdom success. And I pray for all of you here today. As you walk out of this conference tonight. You are joined to success with start in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Now follow me carefully. What is success? What is success? Success. It's not just having money. Success simply means a progressive realization, a progressive realization. That's why I say it's a journey or actualization of a predetermined worthwhile goal. Can I repeat myself? Success simply means, or it could mean, a progressive, progressive is a journey. Realization or actualization of a predetermined worthwhile goal. In other words, there is no real success without goals. So I want you to know, there is no real success without goals. And you must know that goals are important factor. In achieving success in every area of endeavor. Goals are important factor in achieving success in any area of endeavor. So without goals, there will be no success. And that will bring me to what is a goal. A goal simply means... A set. Goals are a set. Let me use the word a set or specific. Measurable. For those who are writing. Specific and measurable steps. Design. I mean, that design 
the program for the achievement and accomplishment of your dreams and your visions. Am I too fast? You're a slow student. Now I'm taking you in a class. This is a lecture house now. I said that there is no success without goal because each success is measured against your goals. You cannot say successful for getting money or buying a car. No. When you set up a realistic goal and accomplish them, you'll be fulfilled and successful. Can you hear me here? And when it comes to success, please, I want you to understand, we have uh, the microcosm and the microcosm. Don't be, shall we start to teach? We have the macrocosm and the what? Microcosm when it comes to success. That has to do with the all round and the what? The specific you accomplish. Now, I want you to understand this today that every success or whatever you call success outside the orbit of goals is not success. Don't look at me as if I'm speaking Japan. Anything you call success outside the orbit of goal setting is not success. Because what you call success may not be success to me. That is why Every true success is judged against your set goals. And I told you what is a goal or goals. Goals are a set of specific, measurable steps that design the program for the fulfillment of your what? Of your dreams and your vision. What is difficult in getting it? So we have to go back to school to be in my class. <laughs> Goals are what? Set. A set of what? Specific and measurable. Because every goal that is a goal must be specific, must be measurable, and must be realistic that design the program for the achievement or accomplishing your what? Dreams and your vision. Now, there is no success without goal setting. Example is life is like a football game, soccer game. Where people are playing soccer, all the effort are geared towards scoring goals. When you score goals, which your, your opponents could not counter, it means you win. So without goal setting, without achieving goals, there is no success. So when realistic goals are set and met, you can be fulfilled and be successful. Are we here today? That's why I said to you in the morning that success is not an event. It's a journey. Now hear me. We have success and good success. Good success simply means the accomplishing of God-given dreams. That's good success or God-given goals. Now let me take you somewhere today. I told you in the morning that if you want to be successful in life, there are three things that will always occupy your mind anytime you are doing something. Number one is, what am I living for? You can't live for everything. You must live for the things that will propel you to achieve your goal and in turn achieve your dreams and visions. What am I living for? 
when you wake up in the morning as a child of God, as a member of this great movement, you must ask a question. What am I living for today? You didn't sleep and wake up by chance. You slept and woke up for a reason. So find a reason. What am I living for? Number two, what am I looking for? At every given point in your life, you want to be successful in the kingdom, you must ask this question, what am I looking for? Even as you're in this church, I wish, please walk on this side. Some people come to church looking for nothing. Some come to church looking for fellowship. Some come to church looking for relationship. So if you come to church looking for God and right information, you can't come here and not come again. So what am I looking for? Number three, if you want to be successful in this kingdom, you must answer this question, what am I hoping to achieve? You can't walk into GLA without dream. We are big dreamers. As you enter this place, you must be a dreamer. What am I looking for? Why would I leave my house on Wednesday and pay my transport and give offering? What am I looking for? Why would I come here on Sunday morning, Sunday evening? What am I looking for? If you don't answer these three questions, success will be far from you. When you come to church, look for God and look for his word. When you find God and find his word, he will give you every other thing according to his will. Don't come to church looking for boyfriend or girlfriend. You may walk out of the will of God and fail to progress. Don't just come looking for money. Look for God. When you find God, you find all things. For the Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 6 verse 33, that seek first the kingdom of God and what? His righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. And I told you in the morning for you to make progress in your pursuit for success, you must do overhauling of your life. And to overhaul your life means to look at the entire makeup of who you are. The spiritual, the, the social, and what? The financial. These are your entire makeups. You must look at them and see the areas you need to drop and add. If not, you're not going to make be successful because you wish it. Success does not come by wish. It doesn't come by desire. It comes by what? By what you do. Say I hear. Come on, say I hear. For God told him that for you to have good success, he said to him, this book of the Lord shall not depart from your mouth. You shall meditate there in day and what? Day and night. Day and night. Then you shall do what? Have good success. Then. Then you shall have good success. Which means that it is not instant. You don't get success because you come to church. Because you read the Bible. You come to church. When you meet what are called what? Conditional guarantee. Then you shall have good success is a condition. Which means if you don't do what God asks you to do, you are not entitled. You will not see the progress or the success. Are we together here? So, as you live here today, you are not going to be successful because you have a car or you get married or you buy a house. No. Your success is tied to the achievement and realization of what? Your set goal per time. That is why before I move forward, you see, those that have goals do not behave like goats. Those that have goals do not behave like goats. Example, he may set a goal that between now and December, 
I want to accomplish this. Can you hear me? And he pursues his goal. If he gets to December accomplishing that thing, he is successful in that thing. He may not buy aircraft. He may not wear designers. Because that is not his set goals. But this person may decide, okay, I want to buy a car. Between now and December. If that car is part of his dream, part of the, the, I mean, his goals to achieve his dream, if he buys the car by December, she is successful. So when you set up goals, you don't follow people to do what they're doing. You do all things in line with your goals to achieve your dream. So men of great goals or realistic goals do not compete. They don't compete. At every point in time, they are pursuing that goal. Everything around them revolves around that goal. Are we here? Now, I will show you Tell you five things today, then before I start concluding, please don't walk out here not listening to me. If you follow these teachings, go back after today, sit with it, apply them, you will succeed. I have never in my life since I understood life, that life is not the same. We all have different destinies different visions, different dreams, and different goals. So I do not need to sheepishly follow somebody and do what he's doing if it's not in line with what I'm pursuing. Praise God. I hope you are flowing. Now, I want you to take your note and put down these seven things. Okay, leave it here, please. These seven things. That number one, whether you succeed or fail does not depend on others as much as it depends on you. Whether you succeed or fail does not depend on others as much as it depends on you. Let it register in your mind today. Number two, that your life is completely and truly what you make out of it. Your life is absolutely, absolutely and truly what you make out of it. As we are here now, some people are writing, some people will go back and read, and listen to it again, some will not. So your life is what truly, what you make out of it. Some people come to church for the first time to get a gift. The next Sunday they go to another church. The next Sunday they go to another church. No, I'm being frank. So, your life is truly what you make out of it. Number three, many people can be responsible for your success, but only you is responsible for your failure. Many people will be responsible for what? Your success, but only you, you only will be held responsible for your failure. Number four. There is so much inside you. Everybody here today. There is so much inside you. And you have what it takes to make the most of your life. You want to succeed? There are so much on your inside. God has endowed you with a lot of things. 
and you have all it takes to make most of it. So if you fail, it's your choice. Number five, you are unique and possesses unusual endowment. With you is a divine capacity to attract and manifest all you would ever need or desire. They're not hearing me today. Because if you hear me, hear me. Go back home, hear me. You're not coming to this church to be, to add to failures. We don't have failures in this commission. And if you're not willing to succeed, you're not willing to succeed, leave. Change your church. Because you're going to be a problem to others. Yes, you'll be a problem to others, be a problem to church. Because some people come to church not to change, not to succeed. They come to what? To, to, to parasite on others. In this commission, it's not going to be welcomed again after this program. Is that clear? Everybody you see have their own need. They fight for their change, fight for their own. They hear the same message with you as you are hearing. You don't do things they are doing. Don't parasite on anybody. Listen to me carefully. You have a life like everybody. We are all endowed with different things to succeed in life. So maximize it. When you ought to pray, pray. Others put fasting and pray. You go and eat. Tomorrow you come and ask them that the church should help you. Which church will help you? Who, will, who is the church? The one who put the fasting, you didn't you fast. Or those who are fasting will now fast and give you in your laziness. No. We are now on a race. And all of us must wake up. When they say move, move the same time. Don't wait. Can you hear me here? Because if one or two or ten or thirty fails in this movement, it's going to slow us down. That's why you must rise up and listen to me carefully. We are not running the, 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 the commissioner church. We are running a movement. A movement. And movement is not for all. Only those who are desperate carries out movements in every generation. Those who want to change, who want to change, I want to change things. Wake up, GRA. You can't have this grace in this house and yet can't make progress. How many points did I give you? Only. Hello. Okay. I said you are what? Unique and you poss and possesses unusual endowment. Within you is a divine capacity to attract and manifest all that you would ever need or desire. Number six. Blaming circumstances or someone because of a situation or a misfortune is responding to the life and the pit of hell. Did you hear me? I said Blaming, blame games. Yeah. Because my father didn't send me to school. My father didn't do this. My mom didn't do this. My son didn't do this. No, I'm saying blaming your circumstances or anybody because of what? A situation or misfortune is responding to what? Lie from the pit of hell. In other words, to succeed in life, take responsibility. Don't blame anybody. Don't say it's the government. Do you know what I've realized? Many a times, when you don't have somebody, you tend to fight more. Yeah, you tend to fight more. So stop blaming government, blaming the system, blaming your uncle, blaming your parents. You are here in Christ. Grace is enough. Paul says, I am what I am by his grace, not by my father, not by my mother. Not by the system of the government. Hello. Are we together? So, when you realize that no one can dictate your destiny, but you and God, you will live a new kind of life. When you realize that nobody can dictate your destiny, your success, except you and, and God, you begin to do what? Live a new kind of life. That is why you can take God seriously than ever before. Esh, I'm going to come to your church. I'm going to visit your church. 
visit your church. The next day you are in the house. You are poor. You are sick. You are struggling. You visit church. You go back home. Who will help you? Is it the ancestors that have not helped you that they help themselves? Is it the job you are doing that cannot give you a good house? Is it not God that will help you? You come to that God, you say, I visit your church. Next week, you visit somebody else. Next week, tomorrow, you blame government. You go on the street. You are, you are protesting. That time of protest, use it to do something for your life. No, I'm being frank here. You will, you will see another, another black person, you kill them. Nobody is, he can stop a man who knows himself and God. Do you know one thing today? America is a nation that accepts more people in the world than other nations. If you go to America, you have other nationalities, other nationals in the whole world than that. Yet, they are progressive. Nobody can take a place of somebody who knows what he's doing. Stop blaming people for you are, you are where you are. Wake up. If you know that God and you are the two drivers of your destiny, your approach towards God will change. And what you do will change. Because you know with you and God, you can be successful. Are we together? So a new kind of love will come. So stop wasting your precious time. Blaming somebody for any challenge or misfortune in your life. Stop it. What's in your time blaming people for any challenge or misfortune in your life? It can't take you anywhere. Then, if we need to set right goals in order to be successful in life, make sure you take your pen. I told you we're in a classroom today. There are a few things I want you to note. Then we will pray. Number one. Discover your passions or what you can give 100% attention. Discover what? Your passion or what you can give 100% attention to without distractions. Know them, pursue them, and run with them, you will succeed. Can I repeat myself? I say, discover your passions or what you can give 100% attention. Discover it. What is it? What is it that you're passionate about? What is it that you can give your 100% attention without distraction? Know them, pursue, and run with them. You will end up successful in life. Number two, build foundational life skill. It will surely take care of your future advancement in life. Did you hear me? Build what? Foundational life skill. It will surely take care of your future advancement in life where you lack nothing. If the foundation be destroyed, righteous cannot do anything. Hear me here. Foundational life skill. Listen to me. Don't live this life. You want to be successful in life? Without developing Certain skills. You can't be successful because you are a waiter. You can start from there. When people come to church, they pray for them, they get a job of 3,000, they leave their church. I see people that have no dream, no vision. You can start from there. Why you are there as a waiter? Don't wait for destiny. Why are you waiting for men? If God start giving you money, hear me, all of you hear me. The problem we have in Africa has its root from the family. Our family setting is a demon attacking all of us. You are here now. You've got the money you ought to have used to get certificate. You send it home every day. The time you ought to what? Develop your skill. You do nothing. And when you now get to 50, 60 years, you want to be successful. How? No degree, no skill, no trade, nothing. How will success come? <laughs> oh God. 
so, God, succeed me. Succeed me and let me succeed. Succeed me. It doesn't really work that way, ladies and gentlemen. Why you start that job as a waiter? It's not a bad thing. But you have a goal, set a goal, that in these three years, I'll get a certificate. Can you hear me here? Set a goal that this thing, I'm going to learn something. In the next three years, I'll acquire this skill. Set a goal. Don't do it because there's no skill in it. That you serve me food does not enhance any skill in you. I can serve myself. After all, when I go for bu buffet, I don't, you don't serve me. Is it not true? So you must have a financial skill you're developing. Can you all hear me here? Because tomorrow, if they pray for you in Maitland, you get a job, 3,000, you stop coming to church. 3,000 job, that is your destiny. Black person. You will stop going to church. As long as you can pay for your shark, you're okay. Don't come here again. We don't need you here. If you don't have big dream, don't come here. Go to that church in the village. Don't come here. You must dream. Don't waste the grace. I, I suffer a lot to pray to fast, to learn, to study, to teach. If you don't have dream to succeed, don't enter here. Anytime we are doing an occasion, we invite you to come and eat, but don't come here. <laughs> no. A man who knows I need God and who has a dream cannot leave God because of 20,000 jobs. You don't force him to pay his tithe because he knows without a tithe, he will stop somewhere on the road. You do a job of 4,000, you can't pay 400 tight. You want to be success. success. Look at success. I see you. <laughs> Somebody pays a tight of 200, 1 million. You can't pay a tight of 400. Age is too much for you. Who would do this thing to black man? If he's an altar, I kneel on this altar. I cause that altar to leave you in the name of Jesus Christ. go to church and pray and get a job, does it not tell you that that God can give you destiny? You jump out. That's the end of the day. Hey, I'm at work. How much? You just, uh, maybe they, I got a job, 5,000. You stop coming to church? So all your destiny is in this 5,000? Wow. Lay hand on your head. In the name of Jesus. Every manipulation going on in your life. If you shout amen, may it end this moment. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. That is manipulation. That is manipulation. Ah. Devil can manipulate you and distract you. If you don't have vision, you may think of a life. You will make it. If that devil didn't stop you from entering GRA, you will make it by force. I say you will make it by force. I say you will make it by force. In the name of Jesus. Are we still here? So build what? Foundational life skills. As you are there now, you want to learn skill, go and learn. Trade. If you want to learn, go and learn. If you want to go to school, do something now that you can at, at least give you insight and help you to succeed tomorrow. We can't be shenanigans in the corridor of success in this kingdom. No. Number three, be open to different paths as God leads you. Be open to learn secrets as God reveals new ideas for growth. Be open to different paths as the Lord lead you. Don't just say that thing you know is all you know to die. No. 
open up to other parts. Many at times, you may not realize that the 100,000 you are wasting could have pushed you faster to success. Assuming you have other things, you know you can put the money there. Be open. As the Lord leads you to do other things, open up. Learn it. Learn it. Success is a journey. And hear me. If you're not successful in life, never you be ashamed of anything that gives you income. Yes. Are we together here? Most of it is a problem. Eh? My wife, my wife will not do that kind of business. People will say, people, who are people? Who are people? Listen to me. You are not yet qualified for success until you grow to a point of sealing your ears against the voice of men and opening your eyes, your ears to the voice of God. People will say, my wife is saying, I've told you before that if your wife sells bread, your wife sells akara, akara. Okay. Now, and guess each day, 500. And your own wife sells a plane, pass, and gets 500. Is the same value. Is what? The same value. The same value. The same value. Hey, my wife will do business of one billion. She will also fail from one billion. Let she start it with 10,000. So when she make mistake, going to be mistake of 10,000. When she grow and again experience there, I will push. You see, our plan is that we try to impress people. Those who want to impress people don't progress in life. No, you don't have anybody. Hear me. Listen to me, all of you here. There is nothing you can do on earth. People will not talk. I, I did a post last time. I said, aspire to please who? God and your conscience. That is all. If you like, be poor, they will laugh you. Become rich. Even in this church, they'll say, hey, what do they do to get money? And they will talk about you. That is one before you. So maturity is your ability. Can you hear me here? To live as God directs you and to take the steps necessary for achieving your dream. No longer listen to what people are saying. People will say, even as I'm here now talking, some people now will gossip me. <laughs> so why, why is he talking that way? They will we hear. Some people will tell you, hey, because talking about us because we are doing, uh, what do you call it? Waiters, you will not listen to what I'm saying. Yeah. The demon from their altar will change the message and give them a different message from it. It's a simple truth. They've got the battle, the battle of altar. He doesn't know what he's doing. As he sits down there, some of us sitting down here are sitting on the altar of the Phanasians. So the thing is blowing hot coal. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true. So if you preach, they will not take what you're saying, they will change them. They'll go back here and turn it upside down and start gossiping. But me, I've grown kidney for gossip, not liver. <laughs> you have your mouth. You can talk. Are you getting me here? Nothing you will talk that will move me. There's nothing again you can talk than what I've talked before. It's a cortic. It's a 419. It's a drug pusher. They've said nothing that can say again that what move me. I'm a man on course. Can you hear me here? Every man going somewhere does not need to throw stone on every dog that back on the road. <laughs> Even your sister here, the other say, eh, you know this business, I want to get uh, the whole mall and start for you. Tell him no. Let me start from my room. <laughs> start from your room. David told Saul, I have not proved this armor. Prove it first. Many a times, so even with the problem, because we are ladies, most of the time, the problem is the ladies, our ladies here. They want to compete. <laughs> the man will never have rest, will not plan well. Every time you see that, ah, did you hear that Ugochuku has bought the wife, this one? Has bought the wife, this one? 
has bought the wife this one. Thank you for those of you who are doing something now. You are going back to school. Can you hear me here? You try to, to, to compete. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are competing with people in these parklands, you are, you are following my hand. Compete globally. Can you hear me here? Compete globally. There are multi-billion women. There are millionaires in dollars who are women. So don't compete by using a car and clothes. Can you hear me here? So come on, tell your number, it doesn't move me. I'm going somewhere. Tell her very soon. I will produce the clothes you will buy. Kingdom success. You know, we live in an environment, if you're not careful, you start competing for nothing. With all this grace upon my life, you're competing with somebody by your, your sister, your brother. Why there are women that run a $100 million business? You should desire to be with like them. Now hear me, hear me. In the school of success, we don't compete. You can emulate, you can desire, you can aspire, but don't compete. Because you don't know what I'm chasing. You don't know why I bought the, the best clothes to wear. It could be because there's something I want to achieve tomorrow. It's part of my goal plans. Then when I wear it and come, after going for vacation yesterday and got contract, I wore it, I wear it again today. You see me say, it's a designer, 8,000, I'm going to wear it. Yeah, are you wearing for what? Because competing with me. No, don't compete. Can you hear me here? If somebody is achieving success, go close. Find out. If it is in line with what you are pursuing, you can borrow certain principles from there. But don't compete. Those who compete ends in a pit. Those that compete ends what? In a pit. Are you getting it right? Oh, I'm happy you're excited. But at times, I'm also happy when you are quiet. I know I'm hitting. <laughs> Praise God. Number four, be persistent in that good thing you do. Be persistent. If you are prayerful, be persistent. You're a tighter, be persistent. You're a worker, be persistent. You come to service every Wednesday. As long as it's good, be persistent. Can you hear me here? In everything good you are doing, be persistent in it. That is the way to success. Number five, be a big dreamer. Dreamers rule the world. Dreamers rule the world. Be a big dreamer. If you dream and it fails, dream again. Don't live without dream. Never live without what? Dream. It doesn't matter how human gods it is. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Keep dreaming. Joseph dreamt and they shut him up. He dreamt again. And I prophesy that in the name of Jesus, every dream in your heart shall come to pass. I say it shall come to pass. After this conference, every big dream shall come to pass. Grace will bring it to pass. God will bring it to pass. In the name of Jesus, no dream will die in your hand. You will give back to your dream. You give back to your vision. Beginning from tonight, in the name of Jesus, come on, shout, I'm a big dreamer. Dream big. We are territory takers. Dream big. Dream big. Listen to me. Let God. Are you with me here? Be you are dependent in the size of your dream. Don't allow your circumstance to shrink your dream. Don't think, don't dream based on where you are. Dream based on where God is. Can you hear me? Because if you dream based on where you are, many of us today, we don't even have 10,000 rand. 
So maybe your dream now will be God. Okay, let me let me let me be do it. Let me just give, if you can give me uh, uh, whatever call it, do I call it uh, maybe plastic? I can be selling it. I'm okay of two thousand. Is a dream. Dream of plastic shop, but start with 2,000 in your house. Is that clear? It's a dream. Don't dream based on who you are, where you are. Dream based on where God is taking you to. I told you that by the end of this month, I'm leaving this project to talk about another one. The one I'm going to do now will be two times of this and I'm going to be around. There's no longer a strong one like a stadium. Somebody shall big dream. And do you know one thing? When I dream, God uses to accomplish it. If I have not dreamt of this, we will not accomplish it. Most of you have gone off your way to give because there's a dream somewhere. You're not hearing me. Yeah. Remember the bottle and the baker was in prison because a dreamer was coming there. Until you have a dream, God can set you up for its manifestation. Don't wait for money. It is a dream that magnets the money. And when money hits the dream, it becomes success. Lift up your right hand. Say, I decree. I, decree. I will succeed. I will succeed. And not fail. In the name of Jesus. So desire growth. Desire progress. And see your future clearly as you see yourself in the mirror. See your future clearly as you see yourself in the mirror. God gave Abraham as far as his eyes, spiritual eyes can see. Now the question now is that when you leave this conference, what do you see about your life? What do you see about your family? What do you see about that business? As far as your eyes can see, God will give you. Number six. Never waste your time doing nothing. No matter how small it is, it's better doing small things than doing nothing. So focus on something that will be a blessing. To you and to others. Because in life, what you make happen to others, to the kingdom, God makes happen to you. Number seven, please. Set a good and healthy habit. Learn to live right. Think right and talk right. Number eight, are we together? Listen to me carefully. The most scarce commodity in life is honesty. You want to be successful in life? Be honest. It's the most scarce commodity. And anywhere it is proved to be in existence, Men will go for it. Most of you today who are from Nigeria, I don't know about Zimbabwe or South Africa, some of you today cannot do anything good in Nigeria because you don't have honest people. Is it not true? If you have somebody who is honest 100%, he will not look for a job, he won't look for money because everybody will be rushing to him to do their, carry out their projects for them. Is it not true? So if you want to succeed in life, you must be honest. Many people in the church, they are the very, very dishonest. We have a lot of shenanigans in the church. Look at why honesty is very important in the journey of success. Look at me here. Do you know that this world you live is a small place? If I do him wrong thing today, 
in the next three years, one day, I will meet him. He will take me to this man. And this man will eventually know this man. And when they mention my name, he will tell them, no, 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 that guy is a crook. I've closed my door to my next level. Be honest. Most of you, be honest. Deal with people. Can you hear me here? Yeah. And have good character. Have God see. Life is not easy. But you have what? God see. Am I talking to you? Number nine, please, want to be successful in this kingdom, in this church, push yourself outside your comfort zone. Push yourself outside your comfort zone. Keep pushing until something happens. All of you hear me here. You are bigger than where you find yourself in life. You can do more. You can have more. Give no room for limitations. That's the key to success. Number 10. This is very crucial. Maybe I may stop here for today. Next time we'll continue. Find your balance and placement in God and work at it. Find your balance and placement in God and work at it. Nothing just happens. Work also your talent and your gift to put food on your table and bring you before great men. The man of God said it last time he came, the last preacher and the first preacher. Network with others doing better than you are. In the areas of your dream, some people are successful in that area. Do you know pride can make you to sit and say, eh, where did, when did he start? What does he know? Life is not only about what you know, but what you produce what you know. Life respects results. Every knowledge that cannot produce results is not, cannot be celebrated. In anything you are doing, some people are going ahead of you. Even in ministry. Why some of them are struggling in parkland? Because of what? Pride. Chimpanzee pride. <laughs> you were here, a man came. The land swallowed you. Swallowed your, your shop. A man came. You were here. That man has come. Conquered that city. Do God have helped him to do what I have not done. 2010, we arrived here. We have opened for built in Zimbabwe, in Swaziland, in Nigeria, in Benin, and we are here. You are still running your shop. And yet, you are dragging shoulder with that person. Go to him and say, sir, I want to know how you conquer. Don't be proud. So associate with those who are doing better than you. Is anybody hearing me here? It could be your, bro your small brother. It could be somebody you brought in this land. As far as what you need is result. It's not who show you. It doesn't matter who show me. <laughs> Did you hear me here? Don't say, eh, eh. they are small boys now. What do they know? They know what you don't know. Find out. How are you doing it? The worst of them are pastors. Eh? You will hear something like, when did they start ministering now? Huh? When did they come to Cape Town? There are young boys in, the, in, the, in, the, in church, yet you're looking for food to pay your shop. Yeah, it's shop now. Because that's where they eat. And hear me. Never ever criticize what you want to become. You will never attract it. Eh? How are they getting money? They are rich. You talk. They are drag. They are 419. Money will disappear from your heart. Am I talking to you? 
oh, those pastors, you know, someone, you know what they console themselves with? They will sit down, company of failures. And they'll sit down and say, all oh, this church is doing well. You don't know what they're doing behind. They are not God. They are God in power. You will die in that shop. Walk out of that place. A young man gave testimony. I saw it on the internet. He is in Kotonou in Benin Republic. He'd been struggling in ministry. Nothing is happening. One day, he took a seat, went to Ota to meet Papa, uh, Papa uh, Oedebo. He got there. They, they were, he couldn't see him. So at a point, he was tired. He was about to leave. Oed, Papa Oedebo came out from uh, to the office and said, where is the young man from Kotonou? Uh, he said, ah, he said, go and call him. He came. He brought his seed and gave to him. He, he said, Nida, you need that. He said, move forward. Move forward. Go. The guy went back on Saturday. Sunday, no hand be printed. The church is packed full. There is people who carry what you're looking for. No program. No announcement. Just move forward. Your ministry, move forward. Pack. He went back. The next Sunday, no announcement. No publicity. Where were the people? Some people are authority. Listen to me. You start up a business. Ah, no, I can't. I will never go to him. He's arrogant. Brother, go to him. Humble yourself. Now, can I tell you something? He's arrogant. You see him as arrogant because you're arrogant. If you're not arrogant, he's arrogant. You humble yourself and go learn from him. Can you hear me? And let me say something to you. I've told him in ministry. Nobody will want to reveal his secret to somebody who competes with him. Amen. Yes, sir. You must show humility yes, sir. for them to lift you up. Yes, when you go there to somebody who's doing better than you in the field, you now go to learn from him. Even if he's older than you, he's your chairman. Yes. Call him your boss, even if he's younger. Yes. Don't go and rub shoulder with him. Yes. Don't say I brought him here. You brought him here and then. The land has swallowed you. So you. You brought him here. What do you do? Go to him and say to him, please, if you can bring a drink, say, show me what is happening. Feel free. Are you with me here? There's a measure of humility you will show. The person will show you everything and pour his heart. Stop this, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, you know me, you know me, I've been there. This is plus, this, you're a small boy. There's no small boy with result. Any man that carries results is no longer a small boy. Time don't reach. You are sending me now. You are pumping me and jumping now. <laughs> Have we been blessed in this conference? There's one guy in, uh, in Abuja, uh, he's a small boy now. When did he start? He's no small boy. Grace has found him. He has been in, in Omaha for how many years I know him. But suddenly during the lockdown, he started going to, uh, to television. Have you watched his prayer? Yes. Do you have prayer point there? Yes. Do you receive any prayer point? Yes. There's no prayer point. You'll be hearing. <laughs> Is it not true? Can you get any strong prayer? But people are getting results. It's grace at work. Also, when did he start? Go to him and say, man, man of God, how did it happen? Stop bragging. That's how to get success. Never in your life, as you live here today, whether I pray for you or not, never criticize what you want to be like. Don't do that. You will never get it. In the spiritual realm, if you criticize what you want to get like, you run away from you. People wear clothes and come to church and say, they're wearing clothes now. How are they getting their money? They just stop you from getting money. <laughs> Celebrate the person. Yeah. Man, your clothes is nice. Yeah. If I grow up, I'll be like you. Yeah. You laugh over it. You sow a seed of appreciation. You attract that thing back to yourself. Put your hand for Jesus. And also clap for me. When you give Jesus, he also clap for me. It's one one. Have we been blessed? 
So, networking is very, very important. But remember also, in networking, be careful. Because people you meet in life, either take you up or bring you down. You have to be careful in networking. So, with this little one, I think I've done justice to the topic. I have a point for you, then I pray for you. Are you ready? Please, on Wednesday, I know after one week prayer, I've been teaching you this thing. By Wednesday, now you go and leave. Don't go and leave. Listen to me, all of you, GRA. We have four months plus to go this year. There's a prophecy hanging on your head. Year of evidence. You have to push from your two cylinders. This time. Don't give any space. On your established this year. Before we know it, August is over. As we enter by month, hey, now 100, 100 meter rest. I mean, yes, you see speed, you will not believe. Don't give any space. Be in God's presence. Pray, push until that evidence is seen in your life. Are we together? Rise to your feet and let's pray. Wave your hands to Jesus and celebrate him. Lose Cambro do Satire. Lika kaproso kotoro basatayaba.